with the SVA Small Business USA Small Business Administration Office of Disaster Assistance. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning, um, everybody from the administration and the public present. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak before you. Uh, this morning, I have some important news to tell you. I think everybody enjoyed the Mardi Gras. <laughs> <laughs> and um, now, just um, I'm in the area only until Friday. I'm with a disaster assistant program. We work hand in hand with FEMA. And so I'm here to represent the SBA and to tell you what's still available to the residents, businesses, and nonprofit organizations that they've been impacted by the tornado on January the 12th. So we know that some areas have been more impacted than the others. Um, I believe it was Tornado 8 that hit the northern part of Mobile County. And so Mobile County became about a week ago part of the presidential declaration that allows the residents to apply for both physical damages and economic impact. With that being said, a lot of people, when they hear Small Business Administration, they think we only serve the small business owners, and that's not true. The portion of the Small Business Administration, Disaster Assistance Office of you know, Resilience um, and Recovery, it's the portion that I represent of the SBA. And I'm here in the area to let you know that residents, they could apply to you know loans, very low interest rate, um, starting at 2.3% for residents and nonprofit organization, up to $200,000 for physical damages to their property. Uh, businesses and nonprofit organization, they could apply up to $2 million for physical damage and as well as economic impact. What does it mean? To business owners, um, it's a lot of help because some of them, even though they have no physical damage to their real estate, to their assets, most of the time after a natural disaster, and it's you know recorded that's been more than 40% of the businesses they go down under if no help is available from the you know different sources. So with that being said, for them, the suppliers, the traffic, everything that has to do with the normal business, it's going down after a natural disaster. So this help from the Small Business Administration, it's vital for the economy. Um, as you all well know, you know, traditionally at the Small Business Administration office, we offer, you know, businesses to, uh, we offer loans to businesses, to minority uh, businesses, we do startups, but this disaster loan process, it's allowing the economy to come back to its, you know, normal after a natural disaster. So I encourage everybody um, uh, to actually use their network, to use their, you know, uh, media to proliferate this information. It's important that everybody knows that's available. It has a deadline. Um, the deadline for physical damage, it's March 17. Residents, they have to first apply with FEMA and register with FEMA, and then they could apply up to $200,000 in loans and $40,000 in additional loans for their personal property that's been damaged. Um, also, businesses in Mobile County that they had physical damage to their property, so to their assets, then they could apply to $2 million. But they could also do a combination of physical damage and economic injury to not exceed $2 million if they choose to do so. Um, as I said, this is just information that should be made available to everybody so everybody understands what's available. It's not necessary to have physical damage to your business or your nonprofit, including churches, to apply for these disaster loans. The disaster loans are available until October 17 of this year, so you have plenty of time to do your taxes, to you know gather all the information that's necessary to apply for this type of loan. Who's eligible to apply? Everybody that's in the area that could prove that was affected, that could prove that has either physical damage or was impacted by this natural storm. A business has to prove that's been in business for at least six months prior to the damage to the uh, natural disaster to January 12th. It needs to be a real business, not just 
online. So it needs to actually, even if it's online, they need to prove economic impact. How do you prove economic impact? A lot of people ask me that. Well, it's very simple. Your taxes, right, from last year versus balance sheet or whatever you show in your books, you know, for January, February, March, you know, and the next six months after the damage, after the January uh, 12th, the natural disaster. So this is how you could compare, and this is how the loan is offered. The great thing about these disaster loans, it's that they are individually perceived by SBA. So they're not like traditional, you know, uh, bank loans where you could go in commercial loans and they said, well, you don't apply, you cannot apply because, you know, you don't qualify because of this percentage or this, you know, rate. No. We look upon each applicant for their credit history. It needs to be approvable by, um, you know, an SBA uh, loan officer. And um, we try to be lenient, but within the federal guidelines and regulations. Um, we made it very simple to apply. On the flyer that we have, and everybody should have received an email. If not, then I'll just blast again emails to everybody. Um, this flyer has a QR code on it. It's not in your material. It's This is a flyer. You have the press release. Uh, the QR code, it takes you straight on the side of the application at sba.gov forward slash disaster. And you could start your application process right then and there. It's that simple. We don't have centers in Mobile. Uh, we are concentrating on the areas most impacted by this natural disaster. And our administration has been recently in Selma, and they visited, and they're trying to do everything that's necessary to help the people that they've been impacted. Yesterday, I think I made myself very unpopular going to all the mayor's offices and um, just leaving a lot of information because I wanted to see to meet one-on-one -on -one with some of them and to see the damages. In the northern part of Mobile, I actually saw damages created by this tornado. I took pictures of them. I documented it. So meeting with the emergency manager from uh, Mobile County, Mr. Evans, he also showed me the areas that they've been mostly impacted. With that being said, um, I'm not going to take too much of your time, but I just want you to take this information as a valid information that could help your constituency, your residents, and a lot of people that they're out there and they don't know this exists. Um, if you have any questions, um, you know, for uh, the public, if they have any questions, they could go to sba.gov forward slash disaster. Uh, this information is available in multiple languages. Uh, we cover all the information as well through customer service. They could call the 1-800-659-2955 at any time and ask questions or ask to have mailed an application to them. Um, but, you know, as long as we are here, we have two centers in, on your press release. They are actually the two centers that are managed by SBA in Selma that they could actually offer one-on-one -on -one assistance to people that they were affected. Um, at any disaster recovery center that's managed by FEMA and at the invitation of the, of the city government and local government, we have SBA personnel. So once we are in the area, we could assist you. Um, I would say more personal and, and would I like it to not go online to go and talk to a person and ask all the questions that I have because I usually have a lot of them. But um, just if you have any questions, please ask me now. Yes, so Commissioner. place to go to apply for an SBA loan, that their only alternative is online? Um, yes, Commissioner. Unfortunately, we don't have a center open. Uh, FEMA doesn't have a center open either in Mobile County. Um, it's We are right now not because of restrictions of personnel, but, you know, we are um, in Selma, and we have most of the centers in Selma. FEMA has a few centers that there are like to the adjacent counties of Selma. And they could go to FEMA disaster assistance and they could look at where the closest disaster recovery center will be to apply with SBA because we have SBA staff there. But physical presence, I'm it. Um, and I don't take loans. 
<laughs> I could just refer people to the website, unfortunately, for now. Would you wish to have a center? Or at least a, a period of time that someone comes in and we can publicize uh, SBA will be at X location for this week because we are we are upon the deadline now. I mean, March 17th is right around the corner. Yeah. Um, well, I understand your concerns and there's those concerns they've been actually faced by the, the residents as well. You know, they, you know that some of them, they're not mobile to go to Selma or they don't want to go to a place. I'm gonna relay this information to my team leads and my superiors and I'm gonna let them know that maybe in conjunction with FEMA, we could have mobile you know, uh, location through mobile, but I cannot promise anything because that's something that I cannot take a decision on. Yes. Good, I'm sorry. I was just gonna say, is there a possibility of, of, of extending this property damage deadline because? It's up to you all, the governor. Uh, so if they wanna extend the deadline, if they think that there is more um, time necessary for us to be in the area, then they will extend the deadline. So part of our problem is we were not a part of the original declaration. Yes, and so to only be in the game for a week to 10 days, and then we find out that we're working against the same deadline that people who were in the original declaration were in, that, that just feels fundamentally unfair. Um, it's noted. Um, I'm going to relay this information and your comments to my superiors, and I'm going to let them know that your concerns are for the people, for Mobile County, and that um, you know you would like to have this either extended or you would like to have this you know more available to the people within Mobile County. Is that the message that I should relay? Yes. Thank you, we need someone who's going to go into the Monaco community and North Mobile County set up for whatever period of time that we can make people aware where they can go in and sit down with a person. There are a lot of seniors in that area. A lot, I and, noticed. Yeah, and it's just they're going to have a lot of questions. Right. And anytime you start talking about a loan that involves their home, they're going to have even more questions because they're, I mean, they don't, they're not part of that crowd that trusts the government, um, particularly when it comes to... I'm also meeting, Commissioner, with the Chamber of Commerces, with a lot of people that are our partners within, you know, uh, the area. So SBDC, SCORE, veterans organizations, and they have all this information with them. Um, some of the SCORE offices that they actually... <clears throat> help people fill in the applications for us. Uh, so they are allowing this kind of assistance, but I will definitely relay your concerns to my superiors and let them know that you would want to have this addressed. I think if, if we could have a physical presence for a period of time, mm -hmm. whether it's a week or two weeks, and then uh, perhaps get this deadline extended so that we have a little more time to to get the message out, to get people that may be interested, because everybody's not so technology savvy. And as you mentioned, we have a number of, of seniors, senior citizens who live in, in the north part of the county that were affected. And so I think that would be more helpful to them if we could accomplish these things. Point taken, absolutely. And I agree with both of you commissioners. Um, and, and I would just relay this information. Hopefully there will, uh, I know for sure I am not gonna be physically present in the area because they already take me in another declaration. But um, my team lead will know about this and also our you know Joint Operation Command Center, FEMA would be informed of this. And um, I'll just hope that they will do the right thing. And Can you get back with us and let us know at your absolutely. earliest convenience what absolutely. the response is? Yes. I have a question. When you talk yes, about administrator. Oh, when you talking about establishing a center, are you talking about office space or an actual facility? What is it? What do we need to do to house something like that? Well, usually the city, the county offers us a space and it goes through a process and then, you know, we you decide where you would want the center, where is most needed, like, you know, commissioner said northern port portion. There's a lot of senior citizens. I've seen 
the damage is myself. So, I mean, I've seen that the need is there. So, if there's anything available that, you know, it would constitute for a center, but as I said, I am not um, a decision maker. I'm a public affair information specialist, so I will relay this information, and if you would like to make this official, then I would um, actually ask the commissioners to actually request this in writing, if possible, via email. You all have my contact information, and if you could have your staff do it today, I will relay this to the JIG as soon as possible. And I think in the meantime, uh the point being that if you need office space, I believe at least temporarily, certainly the county could help you with that. Determine what Personally, I'm on the road all the time. Well, not you, oh, you, yeah. SBA, or yeah. whoever represents your office in uh, working with our citizens. Thank you so much. That's a very generous offer. I'm going to let them know that that's available. And again, please um, make your request in writing so I could forward that information right off the bat and just get an answer for you as soon as possible. We hope to have that to you by this afternoon. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Any additional questions? We appreciate you being here. Thank you for sharing this information. Thank you all. There are no other speakers. Okay. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Number one, approve the list of claims. Two, hold a public hearing so any citizen of the county shall be given an opportunity to be heard for or against any item related to statement of revenues, expenditures, and change of fund balance report. Three, approve renewal maintenance contract with Claris International Inc. in the amount of 2646 from the Youth Center Administration General Fund Budget for software updates and upgrades for the Strickland Youth Center. Four, approve application to the U.S. Department of Justice for Bureau of Justice Assistance, fiscal year 23, the Kevin and Avante program, reducing injury and death of missing individuals with dementia, developmental disabilities, category two, locative technology, four, an award amount of 150,000. Question. Who's Oh, go ahead. <laughs> My, I think our question was probably the same. Who, who is, who's requesting this or sponsoring it? Is this an annual uh, request, and is it passed through money? I, see, I've never seen it before. I haven't seen it either. That's, of course, I could have missed it, but I, I don't, I don't recall it. Was this the sheriff's office? I mean, I know the sheriff's office has that yellow dot program. Is this kind of part of the yellow dot, maybe? I don't know. Maybe the equipment that they use for the, the yellow dot program? requested it, but I guess that was a request made to yeah. them. And none of these are matching grants, are they? They're all passed through, basically. Okay. I mean, it's certainly something we need. Yeah, I, I yeah. totally support it. I yeah. was just curious because I'd not seen it before. Okay. okay well, we can we can just go ahead and we can come back when she gets it. Okay. Number five, accept the retirement of Don Wilhelm, effective January 1st, 2023, and approve appointment of Andrew Sullivan as the Community Traffic Safety Program Director, effective March 13th, 2023, and authorized to amend the grant's budget as necessary. Question. Can, right, go oh, you go ahead this time. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can, uh, Glenn, do you mind giving an, uh, kind of an update on um, what actions were taken after the concerns were raised uh, previously with the appointment of? Uh, yes, Commissioner. Uh, commission, we did get in touch with this uh, state of Alabama. Um, they had already, they had interviewed Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Sullivan had been working with them prior to this on different grants. Uh, Don also had made contact. Um, we made contact with Mr. Selvin and got some pertinent information concerning his capabilities and um, the criteria that was needed in order to fulfill the director's position. And um, then we more or less 
presented it to the commission that um, this individual does qualify and if they wish to proceed on, we could do that or we can open it up for other interviews. And he will work for the, he will work for the Mobile County Commission, correct? Uh, that is correct. And as an but, appoint, as but an appointed, as an appointed not position, not, right, not, not a as a, a merit system employee. That is correct, Commissioner. And so what would be the um, action that could be taken to terminate his employment? It would be a vote of the commission. Okay. Any other questions? No, that's okay. all. Uh, the auth authorization to amend the grants budget is necessary. Is that, um, what? what is the purpose of that? Those are the grants that come in from ADECA, uh -huh. and naturally we would not have the information that he would have. So he, the individuals in the past have always had that authority to make any changes. Okay. Because okay. it's not coming directly through finance. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah. All right, thanks. Any other questions? Okay. I don't think so. Number six, approve shrimp boat lease agreement with Daryl Ruskovich and Christy Ruskovich for one boat slip located at Burnwood Drive, Theodore, Alabama, for the purpose of mooring their ship, uh, shrimp boat for $200 three year term. I want to address, uh, I have a question, Jay, for on this and Tina. Um, for six, seven, and eight, they're pretty much the same thing. Um, can we change that from a three-year term to an annual? Uh, the only reason I say that is I don't want to get caught in a three-year lease with a shrimp boat. Uh, you know, I don't anticipate right now that we're going to start any construction in the next 12 months there. But if we decided to, I don't want to have a lease issue with a shrimp boat uh, preventing any construction. The way it's written, it, it's up to three years, and the okay. county commission can terminate it with 60 days. I okay. Take notice. Okay, thank you. The, the thought was we wouldn't necessarily come back every year, yeah. but if you're expressing need for development of the burn wood property, then we would be able to terminate it earlier than that. So we have a 60 day option to get out of the That's lead. correct. <coughs> okay. Yes, so. So we aren't leasing a shrimp boat. No, it's just we're leasing a slip, slip. right to a shrimp boat. This uh, this was a property that the county purchased last year, and uh, the previous mm -hmm. owner had uh, arranged arranged with these three individuals or uh, shrimpers to allow them to tie their boat, and we just offered them the same thing in, until we decided. It's to. It's an old wharf, not yeah. Condition. Yeah. I'm wordsmithing. It just yeah. when yeah. I read it. I was like, why are we leasing a shrimp boat? Are we going to put Jay to work finally? You know? Shrimp boat lease <laughs> slip, that, a, slip agreement, that. but not boat We'll agree. change the wording to make it more clear. <laughs> Thank you. You don't, you don't want to lease any of these three shrimp boats. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're a good, the guy, the guy who, one of these uh, gentlemen, I think it's uh, Mr. Barber. I went down one afternoon and he was down there. He had his entire motor out of his boat sitting on the deck it's an inboard motor and the next morning i don't know how he did it but he got it all back together and was out shrimping the next morning i would have never been able to it's pretty wow pretty amazing what he did to me so we'll, we'll change the words a little bit i, I see that <laughs> thank you okay commissioners as the commissioner says seven and eight are the same subject matter just okay. different leases Number nine, approve request of the sheriff's office to add two internally purchased vehicles to their fleet as follows. The addition of these vehicles will not increase their fleet. Number 10, approve parking space lease agreement with Jerome Jackson and Teresa Jackson doing business as JJ's Fresh Seafood and Mobile County Commission. Uh, this is at the Theodore Oaks Shopping Center with an automatic one year re renewal. Number 11, approve renewal of two lease agreements with the Lamar companies for two billboards at Michael Square Shopping Center, each for a three-year term in the amount of $2,150 per year per sign. Number 12, approve revision of the guidelines for the Mobile County Commission COVID-19 pandemic to make policy consistent with the Centers of Disease Control and Alabama Department of Public Health current quarantine guidelines. 
2013 approved contract with Thompson Engineering Inc. to provide professional engineering services for storm water management improvements for Tomans Spring Branch and Gumtree Branch. 14 approved adding uh, F. Lee Moon's compliance and policy officer to the region's checking accounts for the following parks. 15 adopt a resolution to consent to the City of Mobile's request for county's participation in the tax incremental financing district 2 for rehabilitation redevelopment or revitalization okay. along a portion of Dauphin Island Parkway. 16 approved sponsorship agreement with Alabama Firefighters Training Foundation Inc in the amount of $2000 for district 1 funds for its Mobile Firefighters Seminar. 17 approved sponsorship agreement with Utopian Legacy Community Development in the amount of 2500 from District 1 funds for its Lead One, Teach One initiative. 18 approved sponsorship agreement with Sims Chamber of Commerce in the amount of $750 from District 2 funds for its annual Azalea Festival. <coughs> 19, approved contract with Taylor White Elementary School PTO in the amount of $20,000 from District 2 funds for a playground expansion. For 20, approve awarding funds for funds provided by Mobile County Commission American Rescue Plan, Strategic Spending Plan approved August 1st, 2022 for capacity enhancements of the Mobile County Volunteer Fire Departments to the following volunteer fire departments in the following amounts. 21, adopt a resolution authorizing requests of the county garage to dispose of certain items. Number 22, approve request of the town of Dolphin Island to purchase the following surplus vehicle from the county garage for fair market value as follows. Can we go back real quick? I just had a question about number 20 on the uh, Alabama Port Volunteer Fire Department. Why is there the amount different than the other fire departments? So all of these recommend the total remaining volunteer to fire departments that weren't included in the first award, mm -hmm. but that last one for Alabama Port, that was all that's been submitted for, okay. and we were ready to just go ahead and move forward and award what they've submitted. Mm -hmm. We're continuing to work for them, okay. work with them to submit for more funding, yeah. which we will reserve for them. And that's what I was, I wanted to make sure because they are a very small department and I know that they're very short staffed with their volunteers and I just want to make sure that we were uh, helping them as much as we can to make sure that they get the proper funding. Thank you. 23 approved change order number three with Hughes plumbing and utility contractors for African Town Heritage House to decrease the contract amount by 46,908.96 for landscaping paid by others. The new contract total will be 1,408,591.04. 24 award bid to Delta Flooring Inc. for Michael Square License Commissioner Replacement Flooring for a total bid in the amount of 145,242. 25 approved change order number one with Al Hill Boiler for Metro Gel Kitchen Precision Boiler Replacement to decrease the contract by $3,000. The new contract will total will be 54,800. 26 approved 12 month outdoor lease agreement with Hudson Outdoor Advertisement for a total amount of 3,600 for a billboard near Escataba Hollow Park and campground to promote the park. No relation, by the way. <laughs> so, is, so is this a, a company that specializes in special outdoor kind of venues that they promote? I think Cherie and Dina were involved in setting that up. Dina, what? what? Yes, we were involved. Okay. Yeah. 27 approved contract with MOA Band of Choctaw Indians in the amount of 5000 from District 1 funds for operational expenses. 28 approved 3,000 for six birthday art contest classroom grants of 500 each to be awarded to the teacher of the winning student or a group per grade level contest category. Twenty nine approved submission of grant renewal application to the Corporation of National and Community Services for the continuation of the AmeriCorps Senior slash Mobile County Senior Companion Program for $599,050. 
30 approve appropriation contract with town of Dolphin Island in the amount of 3750 from District 3 funds to purchase a surplus vehicle from the county garage at fair market value for use by the Dolphin Island Police Department. 31 approved sponsorship agreement with Jag Gals in the amount of $500 from District 2 funds for the brunch and bingo event. 32 approved appropriation contract with McDavid Jones Elementary School Booster Club in the amount of $20,250 from District 2 funds for cafeteria slash gymnasium morals and scholar crafts chairs for McDavid Jones Elementary School. 33, adopt a resolution fixing financial charge or tax to be paid by owners of forest lands located in Mobile County for the use of the land for timber growing purposes. Is, is this the, the um, is this the assessment for the fire to, that goes for the uh, Elmel Forestry for the fire, the volunteer fire departments? It's very general, and we've been doing this for years for the use of land for timber growing purposes, and it fixes the fixes the tax that I believe ten percent, and it's an annual renewal. I'll find that. I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. This is the the first. This is what we were looking for. I don't know what we were looking for, but we found this one nonetheless with the help of records. Okay. All right. The one that you were talking about, we did it in 2015, and the state statute didn't require it to be in subsequent years, or was it? We don't have to do that one annually unless they change um, the law. The tax so we're, we're set. I don't, I'm not sure why Baldwin County did it, but, but the way we read it, it's not necessary, and we haven't done it again since 15. Okay. Martha was helping us with certain annual affirmation of certain taxes and okay we don't think we missed one but commissioner Hutt, commissioner Ludgood brought some to our attention recently and we've done a pretty exhaustive search but and much help with records for helping us with all that as well so this has been in effect we just haven't approved it in well we years. it's usually approved in February of every year uh, typically it's been approved on the first meeting of February we did not so we're approving it for <coughs> Monday. That was something that was in the back of my mind that we did the first meeting in February. To try. I couldn't remember what it was, okay. but it was something. Anyway, okay. and I drove everybody crazy trying to find it, <laughs> but we found it, so. Okay. Very informative. Thank you, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. But I'll get you the answer to that question. 34 authorized advertising and receiving bids for Project West Mobile County Park Improvements. <coughs> Excuse me. 35, consider taking the following action on bids. 36, approve the rental agreement for a one 12 ton air conditioner with heater for the Theodore Oaks location from Sunbelt Rental under the current purchasing cooperative Omnia Partners, the amount of 15604 for building maintenance department. 37, approve renewal of software soft support with SHI International Corps in amount of 7,6330 for U.S. federal production for VMware, vSphere 8 Enterprise Plus and VMware vCenter Server 8 Standard for vSphere 8, all for probate court. 38, approved petition to the City of Sims for an annexation for the Sims Senior Center located at 9635 Moffat Road, Sims, Alabama and authorize the commission president to sign all required documentation. What is, what, what is the uh, ramifications or purpose of that? Does any, I mean, I, are we retaining, we? We're retaining ownership. The city of Sims is annexing property by contiguity. Right. They wanted these, this piece to get to some other piece. This okay. is really an infill. Yeah, I mean, it's just one specific address. I know we've done this in the past. I just well, this is where the 
the building and the property are located pursuant to that. It's actually two parcels. And we, but we own this. We own the property. The property and the buildings, that but it'll be sign. inside the city. And we recently purchased itself. some additional acreage, and so it would include all of That's it. That's right. Okay. It's actually two parcels that combine for the, with now the, quote, Sim Senior and it was Center done at the program. request of the city of Sim. Okay. And the mayor, correct. And the mayor. Okay. And Commissioner, we have some add-ons. First one is approved deed of con conservation easement with South Alabama Land Trust, Inc. as grantee to the environmentally managed the 296 acres of real property that the county intends to purchase there to acquire it by the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation through the Gulf Coast Environmental Fund and authorize the commission president to execute the documents at time of closing subject to final legal review. Let's make one comment. Uh, the actual acreage is a bit over 303 acres. Tina and I and Matthew have been working on this for quite some time and we're very close. Number Once uh, we have this approved on Monday, we should be, we'll just wait for final proof from NIFWIF and we should be able to close this the next couple of weeks or less. We're, but the acreage, and we'll ask the agenda to be corrected to be 303.31 acres. Number two, approve submission of grant renewal application to the Corporation for National and Community Services for the continuation of AmeriCorps Senior Slash Mobile County Foster Grandparent Program for 604739 Number three, approve amend, amended contract with Waterworks and Sewer Board of the City of Pritchard to include funding for miscellaneous point leaks in certain areas. The total contract funds will not be changed. Let me make one comment on that. The Commission may remember on September 9th of 2022, the Commission approved appropriation contract with Pritchard Waterworks for $1.5 million for rehabilitation for certain lift stations. This contract is, uh, it will move that number down to a million dollars and add to a million dollars for lift station repairs and we'll add five, and make 500,000 for point uh, leaks within their water distribution system. I was thinking that we would just rescind the action on September 9th and just have a new appropriation contract that more specifically details what we're doing. The operations manager provided us a very detailed listing of different lift stations that needed it. So unless the commission objects, I'd like to ask that y'all on Monday we rescind the action on September 9th, just approve the new contract with the new terms in terms of where the money will be spent. Same dollars, nothing changes. If that's okay with you, Commissioner Luggett, or we can do it this mm -hmm. way. I just thought it'd be easier. We just had one contract and one agenda item. We'll leave that to you. I have no objection. Me either. Thank you. Are you okay with that, Commissioner Dewey? I'm fine with that. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, next Since he item. sometimes represents Pritchard, too. <laughs> According to the media. <laughs> Inside joke. <laughs> next add-on is approved. Anna, Murphy, Ashley, Nicole, Ross, Flower, Janine, Cruthers, Debbie, Everett, and Kanisha Pritchard to serve as Mobile County Senior Companion Program Advisory Council members for a 19-month term. Also approved the nomination of Dorothy Dorton as Vice Chairman for the Mobile County Senior Camp Companion Program Advisory Council. Who, whose appointments are those? Who makes those appointments? Who's recommending the appointments, I guess? are recommended by the director of that particular program, the Senior Companion Program, and then it's just up to the commission if they want to confirm it. <coughs> they usually generate it from the board. Okay. okay. I'll just yeah. watch it. Just that first one, uh, Ashley Nicole Ross, that's Flowers. Just mm -hmm. needs a correction. Flowers. Flowers. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. We have to approve their officers. See. 
Is that bylaws, their bylaws require us to approve their offices? I would think the board could. They've done that, have they? Mm -hmm. I will, uh, I'll double check their bylaws uh, regarding the vice chairman appointment. Um, this was sent to us late yesterday by the, the director of the program, so I'll double check okay. all that before, before Monday. But the, the board has been dissolved, so they just have the advisory council at this point. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, next add-on is consider a recommendation of the Board of Review for the Junk Ordinance hearings held on January 10th, 2023 for the following citation, citation number 6377. And Commission, uh, we can go back to agenda item number four. Angela is here. You want to discuss that? Morning. I think we just had some questions about. Um, who was submitting uh, the Department of Justice uh, grant for reducing injury and death of missing individuals with dementia and developmental disabilities? Oh, this is for the sheriff's office. That's what. Okay. Yeah. That's what we. That's the right. equipment for the yellow dot program, I assume, or something. Well, Lieutenant Parker didn't tell me yet. Yeah. I mean, I can give a little explanation. I note the equipment. It's, uh, uh, you know, I guess you're familiar with the Yellow Dot program, mm -hmm. and it's uh, equipment that the sheriff's office uses to, if uh, someone, a dementia patient were to be lost in the woods, they wear a mm -hmm. bracelet or an ankle bracelet, or, mm -hmm. and they have equipment that they use to track these people and help locate them. And I'm assume, that's what I assumed that that was, but I wasn't sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that's okay. it, Commissioner. That's it. Okay. Well, we will turn over to Engineering and Public Works, Mr. Kegley. Morning, Commissioners. Morning. Morning. Okay, we've got a little bit of a lengthy agenda this morning. Uh, item number one, a uh, approve a preliminary and final plat of Poe Estates authorizing the county engineer to sign the plat and adding Poe Estates Drive and Angela's Court to the private road inventory. Item two, approved preliminary and final plat of Inquez Estates, that's in District 3, and approved the preliminary and final plat of the resubdivision of Lot 3, Pine Acres, which is in Commission District 3. Item three, authorize the acquisition of property and acceptance of right-of-way deeds for the projects uh, listed. Item four, accept maintenance of a 30-foot strip of dedicated right-of-way along the west and southwest line of Parcel B, dedicated by Platt for Horton Farms subdivision. And this right-of-way will be utilized for one of our 2020 Page Go projects, Natchez Trace Road. Item five, accept maintenance of a 30-foot strip of dedicated right-of-way along the south line of lots one through 10 inclusive, including curved transitions onto Jordan Road and Dykes Road, dedicated by Platt for Dykes Road Farm Net Subdivision. And this will be utilized for one of our 2020 uh, Page Go projects, Pierce Creek Road. Item six, accept maintenance of a 10-foot widening strip of dedicated right away along the north line of lots one through 10, inclusive, dedicated by Platt for Plantation Grove Subdivision. And this will be utilized for one of our 2020 page go uh, projects, County Farm Road. Item seven, accept maintenance of a 20 foot strip of dedicated right of way along the west line of lot six through 14 inclusive dedicated by Platt for Pioneer Estates subdivision. And this will be used for Murray Road, which is one of our 2020 page go projects. Item eight, accept maintenance of a 30 foot strip of dedicated right of way along the west line of lots one through three inclusive, dedicated by Platt for Alfred Landing subdivision. And this will be for that same Murray Road project. Item nine, accept maintenance of a 15 foot strip of dedicated right of way along the east line of lots one through three inclusive, dedicated by Platt for the resubdivision of lots two, Riverhurst subdivision for the same Murray Road project. Item 10, accept maintenance of a 20-foot strip of dedicated right-of-way along the west line of Lot 1, dedicated by Platt for Wilbur Estates subdivision, and this is for that same Murray Road project. Commissioners, items uh, 11, 12, and 13 are 
adopting resolutions for the 2018 uh, Series C bond issues for the 2018 Page Go project. I'll read them. Item 11, adopt a resolution to accept proposal from Regions Bank for purchase of the county's $20 million pay-as-you-go road, bridge, and drainage facilities bond, Series C. Item 12, adopt a resolution and order authorizing the issuance of $20 million of principal amount of pay-as-you-go road, bridge, drainage facilities bond, Series C, to be dated February 1, 2023. Item 13, adopt a resolution and order calling for a redemption on February the 27th, 2023, all of the county's $20 million pay-as-you-go road, bridge, and drainage facilities bond, Series C. Item 14, 15, and 16 are pertaining to the 2022 pay-as-you-go program. Item 14, adopt resolution to accept proposal from Regents Bank for the purchase of the county's $30 million pay-as-you-go road, bridge, and drainage facilities bond, Series A. Item 15, adopt resolution and order authorizing the issuance of the $30 million principal amount of the pay as go road bridge drainage facilities bond series A to be dated February 1, 2023. Item 16, adopt resolution and order calling for the redemption on February 27th, all of the county's $30 million pay as go road bridge and drainage facilities bond series A. Item 17, approve for signing a contract for professional engineering services for the Scott Dairy Loop Road resurfacing project to Kimberly Horn Incorporated. Commissioners, we're using Rebuild Alabama money for uh, items 17 through 22. Item 18, approve for signing a contract for professional geotechnical engineering services for the same Scott Dairy Loop Road resurfacing project to Terracon Consultants Incorporated. Item 19, approve the signing a contract for professional engineering services for the resurfacing of Blackwell Nursery Road South to Civil Southeast LLC. Item 20, approve the signing a contract for professional geotechnical engineering services for the Blackwell Nursery Road South resurfacing project to Geotechnical Engineering Testing Incorporated. Item 21, approve the signing a contract for professional engineering services for the resurfacing of, or excuse me, not resurfacing, but the Patilla Road Bridge Replacement Project to Neil Schaefer Incorporated. Item 22, approve the signing a contract for professional geotechnical engineering services for the same Patilla Road Bridge Replacement Project to Southern Earth Sciences. Item 23, adopt a resolution approving conveyance to the City of Citronelle of three right-of-way deeds and a drainage easement document um, for the Triumph Road project. Uh, we're doing this by a quick claim deed. Citronelle has accepted the uh, maintenance responsibility for Triumph Road. Item 24, approved purchase of Carlson Survey Suite and Carlson Civil Suite software from Carlson Equipment and Software LLC for the Engineering and Public Works Department. And that is currently it, Commissioner. Okay. Do we have anything else? Commissioners? I saw an item about the um, Africatown Heritage um, on here, uh, house. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted to say I saw an article this week in the news, I think on Facebook maybe, about um, the... If I can find it real quick, I think I have it pulled up. Uh, National Geographic UK names Africatown Heritage House best new U.S. museum in 2023. I didn't know if you had seen that, but um, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. So that's nationwide, by the way, not just Alabama. So congratulations. The only thing I can say, I don't see how they could. I mean, it's I, nice, I but they haven't seen it. How do you say It's not that? open yet. <laughs> it's not even open. They're, pretty, they're obviously they pretty excited it? about it. So I did see the article, and, you know, we'll see. I mean, that's a nice Just thing. take it. Just take it. I take it. I take it. <laughs> they're expecting great things. It apparently. puts some pressure on. That's all I can say. That's some pressure. Yeah. <laughs> People are working really hard to do yeah, a great job. I'm looking forward to it. And when is the grand opening again? July 8th, 2023. Okay. Very good. Well, okay. maybe National Geographic UK will be there for the grand opening. All right. So. All right. Well, All right. If there's Thank nothing you. else, uh, we will see everyone on Monday. We stand adjourned.